Another day, another patch in NBA 2K22, and some people aren't happy, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you that. Some people are. It's mixed feelings in the community right now. I'm going to keep y'all up to date on what's to know and what's not to know. Hey! If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. At this point, it's just necessary. So Resident Tryhard Power was up at 5 a.m. and caught the update. He posted on Twitter saying, four gigabyte current gen patch just dropped for 2K22, probably to fix badges. Okay, so new update. Uh, what's in the update? Well, we didn't know, actually, for a very long time. <laughs> Which led some people to speculate. This tweet here says, bro, a 30 gigabyte update. Did 2K add a new shirt again? <laughs> But no, like about 12 hours later, 2K decided to clarify on Twitter saying, our latest patch on current gen is live with more fixes to improve the overall experience of NBA 2K22. And because we know it's NBA 2K and they never really tell us all there is to know in the patch notes, people began to speculate in the replies. Badge Plug responded saying, paint defense seems to be buffed. Anyone notice it? To which Nadex responded, what else did they patch? I ain't reading all that. Well, here, Nadex, I got you, my brother. That's what I'm here for. That's my whole value. But no, once you get into the patch notes, you realize just how deep it is. Like, just let me scroll for a little bit. Like, these patch notes go on forever. The way 2K organizes patch notes is crazy because you would think this is one big patch note. No, no, no. If you scroll down enough, they just compiled previous patch notes in the same file. Why would you not just separate them so it doesn't look like one long ass document? They actually surprisingly did get into detail about specific bugs in the gameplay, which they fixed. If you're curious about what those bugs are, they include things like tightening collision detection to prevent ghost charging, blocking fouls during gameplay. There was a glitch with the rebirth and associated quest should once again be attainable for those users still looking to properly acquire it, which is probably the most important patch note. I've heard so many countless people tweet me saying that there's something wrong with their rebirth build. They can't get access to it it's a glitch 2k fix it and then they begin to immediately get more vague by saying many more fixes included to improve the overall experience of nba 2k22 across all game modes they talk a lot about ui updates which jesus there needed to be some and ui is like the stuff that never makes headlines but it just makes the experience more not frustrating it doesn't even make it better which we all need more of in 2k okay and i get it there's like a lot of back and forth this person wants this this person wants something else one thing that everybody wants is great skin. Hey, this video right here is being brought to you by Qology. One time I was talking to a female, she went to my bathroom and she said, a hey, detective agent, where's your face wash? Where's your moisturizer? And I thought, why would I have that? So I asked my friends, hey, do you guys have face wash and moisturizer? And they all did. So I felt like I was behind the curve and for some reason men never feel comfortable talking about it but your skincare is really, really important. You ever look at a celebrity and think to yourself, how do they look so young? It's because they take care of their skin. But unfortunately, skincare can get expensive and that's when Curology comes in. You go on the Curology website and you fill out a survey that tells them about your skin. You take some photos and they take a look at you. Based on the information you give them, they put together a customized formula for your skin. It's specific to you and your needs. With Curology, skincare becomes affordable. The first month is $5, and every next month is less than a dollar a day. I'm curious what the guys think. All right, Chris, what's your facial care routine? Uh, I use hand soap and hand sanitizer. I was wrong to ask you. <laughs> hey, Mr. Sinat, <clears throat> what's your facial care routine, man? Milk. You put milk on your face? Yes. You're not helping my case. Just throw sand on your face. And go to sleep and then wake up. Don't do that. Don't don't don't, 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 don't put that in because they're gonna they gonna actually do it. Somebody gonna sue me. Fam recommends sand in your face. Me though, me, I recommend Curology. Okay, so maybe those guys were the wrong people to ask. But the process is pretty simple. It goes like this. First you apply the cleanser, and then you apply the moisturizer. And then at night, you apply a customized formula right before you go to sleep. So God damn it, start taking good care of your skin today. Click that top link in the description. It'll send you to Curology. You can fill out your information and you can get your customized skincare routine done for you. Something simple, man. Take care of yourself, ladies and gentlemen. It'll go a long way. Thank you to Curology for helping sponsor this video. They actually go on a list of different adjustments they've made to the courts, arenas, of course the jerseys because the NBA just released their new like city edition jerseys, I believe. And they also go on like a slew of different players that they've adjusted the likeness of. Some of them are new face scans they added into the game like Lindsey Allen, don't know that person, but Scotty Barnes, Toronto Raptor native. <laughs> 
So yeah, we all know Scotty Barnes, or you should. He's a beast, leading the Raptors in points. You know what I'm saying? He's a rookie. Talk about it. <laughs> I mean, so it's like, don't mind me <laughs> or anything like that, man. And again, these are fixes that everybody can get behind, but now we get into the gameplay stuff. Reduce the frequency of stumbles after dunks as requested by the community. It's funny how in some of the more like, I guess technically controversial notes, they let you know like, oh, this was like requested. We didn't even really want to do it. It was the community that requested it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the big one, the one that Power referred to at the beginning of this video, adjusted the logic for several shooting badges, including Chef, Limitless Spot Up, Difficult Shots, Circus Threes, Rhythm Shooter, Catch and Shooter, Set Shooter, and Stop and Pop. So if your build had anything to do with shooting, the game probably feels a little bit different for you the next time you hop on. I have yet to experiment, although I, I might hop on stream. Hey, Twitch link in the description if y'all wanna catch that. Sorry, am I showing off my hand too much? Just really proud of my pet. Pedicure, guys. Pedicure is on your feet. I just lied to you. <laughs> Players can now dunk more frequently in certain situations, even when not using the skill dunk mechanic, because obviously it's seen some more criticism. It's, it's on or off with the skill dunk stuff. Some people hate it. Some people think that it's tolerable. Some people actually like it. I would argue a lot of these gameplay adjustments, because you don't need to get into all of them, are good. Address the community reported issue where the AI could get stuck attempting several fake passes in a row. So there they go again with the community suggestions. Which is cool, I guess it's nice that 2K is keeping a pulse on what's being said. Every once in a while you see a clip go viral on Twitter or on Reddit of just the craziest things happening in 2K. And it's natural, it's a video game, it's not gonna be perfect, but the fact that it's being addressed is good. They go on to make like some quality of life stability fixes across both the city and the rec center. And they severely need it, like the latency I'm playing on on 2K is atrocious. It's not something that should belong in a triple A video game. It's a shame that it does. Fix the issue where people were having difficulty squatting up in the Gatorade training facility. Fix the issue with invites and voice chat. Fix the issue with the stats not being displayed properly on the Pro-Am. They also talk a lot about fixes to my career and the quests on current gen. I haven't played the quest system on current gen, only next gen, so I can't tell you how horrible it's been, but I know on the next gen system, the issues were so tragic that there were times where you couldn't even continue the story mode until an update came out. So all of this stuff is like well appreciated. I'm glad unlike the last year of 2K, if you guys remember correctly, where they just abandoned the game. They just disappeared. The devs just like walked off. Like in the middle of their job, they just left to work on this game. So if the same thing happened with this game, then it's like, all right, well then every game's just gonna be incomplete. But it seems like they're trying to form it into a complete game. Although we could all sit here and argue that it should have been done at launch. But NBA 2K players are so split on the changes being made to the game. Of course, everybody was really cautious when the game launched because in terms of like its sliders and the way it played, it was in a good spot. There was two main issues people had. One was on ball steals were way too easy and two, was you, you're hitting way too many whites. So even if you didn't release the ball properly, this, it still dropped. And since then, things have evolved because of course now 2K has the ability to change things on a whim. They don't actually have to tell you they're changing something. And even as we sit here and go through an overview of the patch notes, we have no clue whether or not these are all the things that were changed. I haven't said a single thing so far. There's nothing in the patch notes about paint defense, but Badge Plug is saying paint defense seems to be buffed. So what we're seeing now is a lot of tweets and posts and comment sections on Reddit and on YouTube all over the place saying things like, 2K changed something, for sure. Something feels off. And if you guys, I, wonder, my, I think it's my most recent video. I went on there to play the Halloween. I was trick-or-treating, gathering my rewards. I was feeling myself. I hop in a game and it just feels different. It turned me off. And it didn't turn me off because the game was being updated. Update the game, yes. It's the fact that I was not informed about those updates. I get most people don't care. Like y'all might like hop on a video like this to know what's going on. Like most people is not gonna sit there and read the notes. I get it. But we shouldn't be in the dark about changes and we just, sh we have to discover them on the go. That's crazy. Batchplug says, I don't care. 2K22 was a top three 2K before the patch last week. Now, I don't even know where to put it. Revert the patch. This patch was horrible. I don't care what you think. He follows up, anyone with a brain cell can tell things change that we weren't told about. I've never been so sure of a slider gameplay change we weren't told about. So someone says, what changed feels the same to me. Badge Pug clarified, he said, I'll give a few. The on the ball steal nerf lets people literally run through you. Yeah, you still get steals, but way less that are deserving, which also makes the left right cheese better. Shooting is horrible now, paint defense was cruised. I'm delayed every game and more. 
which is something that Luck also said on Twitter. He said he was also feeling delayed while playing 2K22, which I would argue, I always feel delayed playing 2K22. To go from a game that's like well-optimized, like Valorant, and you play on 15 ping or Rainbow Six, and I play on 31 ping, or even games that are poorer like Call of Duty where I play on like 60 ping, to go to playing on like 150 on 2K just always feels atrocious to me, dog. The idea of the seasons is fantastic. It means that you get more content, more. What I'm starting to realize might be the case though is that the content for the seasons was just developed at launch. And then they're just holding it behind a gate until like, you know, the season's over and it's a new season and then they give you all this new stuff that was developed at launch. It's a little different when a game like Rainbow Six comes out with their seasonal content because they're actually developing it as the season's going on, so it's new content. This is technically just content that like we didn't have access to. But that being said, even if they are gating content and giving it to us as time goes on, it is making the process of like, oh wow, there's something new, there's a reason for me to hop on and play. So I would argue the addition of seasons has its possible Positives. Like D-Man Pirates tweet saying, for real though, seasons being added to 2K is a W. We had to get season two started off right with a clip here of, uh, well, here we have uh, some gameplay on the wreck. Taz, Ali oop, 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 oh, <laughs> okay. Chamoma says, seasons are literally one of the greatest things 2K could have added to the game. They definitely got a return in the future. But then again, it is split. Here comes its critics. Chalk says, you guys keep saying that the level 40 grind is too easy because people are hitting it fast. You understand that Legend took around 2,000 plus games. Hitting 40 each time takes around 500 games. It's adding up to basically the same amount. People's criticism is that a lot of the excitement behind grinding in NBA 2K was seeing the race, right? And 2K17 was the most popular example where Nadex and Orlando and Chicago were just battling it out on the, one on the Xbox, one on the PlayStation, I believe. The point was, is that beef right there, that drama gathered so much excitement that people tuned in every time they leveled up to a new ah ah ah. So just having, missing that, because now everything is staggered by seasons, to reach legend on NBA 2K22, should I say, takes, I think they said four seasons of you hitting level 40. Although someone will still hit it first, the race is staggered. Think of it more like a 400 meter relay instead of one long 400 meter race. It is, it's not enough time to build the tension, I guess. It's not even really like a relay because everybody starts at the same point every single season. Besides the point, I personally, as a person who's not sitting there hitting level 40 every single season because I have too much things to do, I'm actually in favor of seasons. It gives me a reason to continue to want to come back, especially like deep into the year, man. In July, bro, yes, please, give me a good reason to hop onto the game with some new content, a new season, something. I also noticed, by the way, I don't know if y'all noticed that, but in terms of the animations, like the intro animations when you get into a park game or the park celebrations, we have lost 90% of these animations, guys. The animations we used to have in previous years, it was such a plethora. There were so many hundreds, you didn't even know how to choose which one you really wanted. It kind of feels like they took away some animations so that they can give us the same ones we had in previous years as seasonal content because there's 40 different levels in multiple different seasons, so they need something to give us for each one of those levels. And on top of that criticism, a lot of people have been saying that reaching level 40 is either too easy or too hard. It's too hard for the casual person who doesn't spend a lot of time on the game to hit, but it's too easy that people that do spend time on the game are hitting it in a day, like Hank the Tank. Yes, Hank the Tank hit it within 26 hours of the season being out. Granted, he probably had like double XP and it was like day one, so it was quadruple XP, but 26 hours, that's impressive. But then you kind of have to fall back and remember that like, first of all, there's two different games that we only get to play for one year before the next potentially two different games come out. What I think is happening, and this might be a, like a future documentary, is people are just experiencing a lot of franchise fatigue. People that have been in the community since like 16, 17, y'all played the game, dog. Like, at the end of the, it's a basketball game at the end of the day. Like, there's only so much that can be done. Yes, they fucked with the gameplay with some sliders, correct. But there's a lot to like about 2K22, and some people are just sick, they're just tired of it. And what I think is gonna happen, because believe it or not, I was in the Call of Duty community before I ever came over to the NBA 2K community, same thing happened over there. People fell off because they already experienced it, they did everything they could do in the community, and then some new people came in and the community got lit and active again. I believe that's, what, that's what's gonna happen here again. I'm curious how y'all feel about seasons, these updates, and just the current state of 2K22. Is the game fun? Is it enjoyable? Is it boring? Is it dry? Why you think so? Leave a comment down below. I'm curious. I know there's a lot of people in the community that watch me, so just let me know, man. I will be reading the comments. If you don't want to do that, there's a video right here. <laughs> 
Um, I get it. You have something to do. You don't have to click it. All right. Catch you guys in the next one.